know it's been said that many are called, but few are chosen. We're here at Boston Lodge, we have a saying too. Many are cold, but few are frozen. <laughs> That's because we're in the hinterlands. Anyway, here's the hinterman himself, my uncle, and the star of the show, or what it be immodest of me to say, the co-star, along with yours truly of the Red Green Show, my uncle, Mr. Red Green! Thank you, Harold. Thank you, and uh, welcome to uh, Possum Lodge. And uh, by the way, Harold, you're not the co-star, you're the coaster. <laughs> oh. And a pain in the hinterland. Uh, Harold here is uh, my producer slash director slash nephew on the show. I'm also the resident whiz. <laughs> and we all enjoy a whiz, don't we? <laughs> I think what Harold is referring to is that uh, conglomeration uh, hanging around his neck there that he uses for doing all his visual defects. <laughs> like this? Uh, that's so Harold can do to your eyes the same thing he does for your ears. <laughs> anyway, uh, by golly, the hills are alive with the sound of shotguns up at the lodge this week because it's the opening of hunting season. And the lads are all out in the bush doing what they do best, flattening ferns and draining wineskins. You know, Uncle Red, it's, I find it hard to fathom the fact that in this enlightened age, you know, I mean, the times of, of animal rights and anti-fur lobbyists, gun control, that somehow hunting can still survive. Well, Harold, I'm amazed that you can survive. <laughs> so in our way, we all stand in wonder. I am against hunting. That is my position. You're here at the lodge as a favor to my brother. That's your position. <laughs> so anyway, everybody's uh, pretty excited about this hunting thing. Uh, so far, the biggest killing has been made by Murray and Duane down at their store. I mean, they're selling everything. They sold old man Sedgwick a really powerful shotgun. Uh, so the bunch of us chipped in and got him some glasses. <laughs> and uh, Stinky Peterson, uh, he got himself a bow and arrow this year, but uh, unfortunately, while he was biting the rubber suction cups off the tips of the arrows, uh, Moose Thompson sat on his quiver. <laughs> They'll both be out of the hospital Thursday. <laughs> but probably the, golly, the most excited guy would be uh, Noel Christmas, our security guard, because ordinarily Noel is not allowed to carry a gun, which means he has to use his personality to defend himself, which uh, actually starts more fights than it stops. <laughs> Excuse me, Uncle Red, uh, maybe we should just keep moving on, you know, while we still have a viewer. Oh, yeah, Harold, no, that's fine, that's fine. Let's, let's keep it moving. I'm uh, kind of anxious to get hunting myself, so uh, we'll try to get this half hour done as quickly as we can. Well, I suppose anything's possible. Einstein did prove that time is relative. Yeah, I wish he'd proved that you weren't, Harold. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Yeah. Uh, I have an emergency announcement. Uh, can I have everyone's attention, please? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we've had a shooting. Golf. Oh, well, I'm not impressed with that, Noel. Grown men out in the middle of the woods shooting defenseless animals. whoop de do. There's no announcement to be made there. You know what? You should be ashamed, Noel. Well, actually, uh, you know, no, no one shot any animals. Uh, I shot Murray. Oh, well, that's not so bad. <laughs> and it seems uh, Bill's having a hard time finding Doc Render. Uh, try the kitchen. Hello, Noel. Who'd you shoot this time? Murray. Oh, well, that's not so bad. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Bring him in here. Does it hurt? Oh, no, Harold. It's only a bullet. <laughs> Noel shot me. Yeah, we heard. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, geez. <laughs> Thank you, nurse. Murray's been shot in the back. The lower back? The really lower back. But above his legs. <laughs> Bill's gone to get Doc Render. I don't need a doctor. I need a lawyer. How about a proctologist with a magnet? <laughs> I'm gonna sue you for everything you have, Noel. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna own your Cherokee. Well, uh, yeah, it, it was an accident. Oh, and I should be suing you. Oh, yeah, I was out after a squirrel, and with that, uh, you know, butt of yours taking up half the forest, well, my bullet didn't stand a chance. What is that? An insult? Oh, very clever, Noel. You can shoot people and get off a few zingers. Oh, I wish I were you. <laughs> well, think of this, Murray. There's a silver lining. You'll get a medal. You know, certainly not a purple heart, but a real nice purple. <laughs> You know, if you need me, I'm just, I'll be out of your way over here. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> Murray, if you die, do I get the store? If I die, you die. That's a pact I made with the devil. <laughs> really? 
Well, you should have discussed that with me. I should be consulted on things that terminate my life. That's thoughtless. Don't push it, Dwayne. We've had one shooting already. Okay, drop your drawers. The doctor's here. Not you, Dwayne. Dwayne, can I get a little privacy here, huh? Now, it, it was me who, who sent Bill to get Doc. Don't forget that, Murray. Well, I never saw Bill. I just figured you probably shot somebody by now. <laughs> it's my sting to touch, Murray. Right. Oh, you're gonna pay for this, Noel. Trust me. <laughs> what are you looking at? Oh, nothing. Oh. Some head of security. Oh, you should arrest yourself for attempted murder. <laughs> oh, oh, Bill, Bill. I think I saw Doc Render down by the trout pond. <laughs> Grandma's mustard plaster could cure most anything. Grandma's mustard plaster, it'd make your eyeballs sting. Oh, Grandma's mustard plaster, she used it on her walls. Grandma's mustard plaster, the house looked fine, but it smelled kind of sick. <laughs> Grandma's mustard plaster. <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're going to show you something that you can do with your old car hood. Uh, if you're anything like me, I'm sure it happens a lot of times. You're driving down the highway and bam, your hood just blows right off. Don't you hate that? <laughs> uh, of course, with me now, it's probably my own fault because I've been uh, keeping the hood closed by using the same piece of duct tape over and over and over. <laughs> but you know, uh, it's worth going back and getting that car hood, even if you have to apologize to the people at the bus stop. <laughs> because that car hood is going to save you about 30 bucks come Christmas. Because with a little ingenuity, some elbow grease, a little bit of use of the brains here, you can make yourself a dandy little toboggan. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, now, the first thing we want to do is uh, get the uh, hood ornament off there. Uh, is that a, that a Phillips on there? Or... Oh, I see. Okay, 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 yeah. That's got her. Now we just flip her over. <laughs> Should have got a Volkswagen hood, I guess. Now, you take this rope and uh, you just string the rope uh, through the front here, and then you can tie it to something or just get the fat kid to sit on it. <laughs> and uh, after that, you're, you're pretty well ready to go, but uh, for me now, uh, I don't, I don't like just sitting right flat on the hood. I like to be up a little higher, you know, so I can see what's coming because there's, there's nothing worse than uh, flying down a farmer's field and getting hit in the face with a frozen trail treat. <laughs> okay, so what we've done is, uh, in my opinion anyway, we have combined uh, comfort and style, and we've done it quick and cheap using the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> uh, I guess the downside would be that we did pork the front seats out of the car, but... Uh, you know, you really shouldn't be driving in winter anyway. And don't forget, wear your seat belts. So if you just excuse me, uh, I'm going to do a little tobogganing. But until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> spring a time to assess the degree of winter damage you go to the basement and count the empties <laughs> wow well, you know nobody was uh, very happy about uh, moose getting shot in the backside a couple of inches over it could have meant the loss of a member <laughs> and even if it had been serious it's not like you'd get a trophy that you'd want to stuff and uh, hang on your kitchen wall <laughs> I'll tell you, this should put an end to those self-righteous complainers who say that hunting is one-sided in favor of the hunters. I do not know how you can trivialize such a thing. No, I guess it won't sound some. <laughs> well, I'm just, how can you be so flippant about a serious hunting accident, Uncle Red? I feel you should just be a little more sensitive towards the issue. All right, uh, we all feel bad that uh, Murray got uh, shot in the backside and he's got a right to be uh, angry with Noel. But I don't think he needs to take it out on the rest of us by doubling the price of everything in his store. Everything? 
Including cherry licorice? <laughs> oh, yeah, cherry licorice, the pixie sticks, even the sponge taffy, Harold. <laughs> Uncle Red, can I have a raise? Let me think about that a minute. No. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, Murray's raised the price of everything down there. It's, it's creating some real problems. Uh, Moose Thompson says that the uh, price of aftershave has skyrocketed with uh, no appreciable improvement in the taste. <laughs> I asked uh, Stinky Peterson if maybe the price of deodorant or soap or toothpaste had gone up, and uh, Stinky had no idea. <laughs> but uh, one thing I just heard recently is the price of ammo is now at the point where a bullet costs the same as a side of beef which means we're going to have to admit that we hunt just for the fun of it, which is a no-no, which means something has got to give. <laughs> like Uncle Red, instead of maybe getting a raise, you think maybe I could just get, like, paid in pixie sticks? Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> I don't like to question your medical judgment there, Doc, but do uh, you think we should have taken Murray to the hospital? Now, Red, there's a reason they call me Doc. Just like there's a reason they call you Red. Say, why the hell do they call you Red anyway? No idea. Uh, and Murray will be fine, trust me. Yeah, but he was shot, Doc. Red, he's got a minor abrasion on his gluteus minimus. <laughs> sure, he's got some nasty powder burns on his butt, but he'll have to go at that in his own time with a scrub brush. <laughs> hell, I can stomach just empty that box of Band-Aids on him. <laughs> he'll be fine. You know, I... I once saw a man get hit by over a hundred bullets and not blink. <laughs> yeah, well, dead men don't blink, Doc. Now, do I look dead, Red? <laughs> There's no fish here. Not a one. Are you yeah. telling me you were hit by a hundred bullets? Yeah, yeah. What, somebody drop a box of them on your foot? <laughs> no, no, it was when I was working as a fireman. <laughs> yeah, we got a call to an ammunition factory. She was a mega fire, Red. <laughs> Flame shooting up into the sky so high they were they were pigeons flying over completely cooked. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. And then we got the word they were children trapped inside the building. Oh yeah, sure, Doc. I mean, who would let children into an ammunition factory? Uh, it was a school tour. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. What kind of school is this? Uh, military academy, I believe. <laughs> That's too fast for me, Harold. So, without any regard for my personal safety whatsoever, I ran in. Yeah. Dodging the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in the air. <laughs> and I led those kids to safety, Red. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the smiles on those little cherubic faces and the, the thanks from their parents were more than ample compensation for the hundred bullet holes in my body. How come I've never seen uh, any bullet marks on your body there, Doc? Well, they're, they're, they're red. They're just, uh, you know, you gotta look real close. They're all over my back. All over my back. Oh, yeah. Hey, they look a lot like uh, bad acne scars, but uh, they're the real McCoy on <laughs> Hey, you can't outrun a bullet, my friendly. You think you could out talk one? <laughs> now it's time to get back to reality. Oh, 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 oh. It's Adventures with Bill. Uh, Bill got himself a little bike there. He wanted to fix up there. Oh, the kickstand. Well, that's not a kickstand anyway. That's just a pair of pliers. Well, what a neat idea. Use the uh, pliers as your kickstand. You can use the pliers to adjust the... You want to adjust the handlebars here and get them kind of straightened out there, kind of out of whack. And he dropped the bell, and and uh, when he bent down to pick it up, he had his sleeve caught in the, in the handlebar, which I pointed out to him, just trying to be safe. And then... Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Well, we're off to a good start, and the uh, front tire is flat, so Bill figured he'd pump it up, and uh, pump and pump and pump and pump, and then just, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> a little too long of a stroke there, I guess, Bill. Oh, well, no problem. Oh, all right. And you get another pump, and this is the, uh, the hand pump kind, so you can't really extend it quite as much, hooks that onto the tire, and just... Now, Bill's pays too much attention to the camera, for my mind, not enough to the tire. He had a weak spot there, and she'd kind of been starting to, oh, my gosh, she was right there. And, Oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah, I started thinking about my hernia when I saw that. And anyway, uh, he got that all done, and now he's gonna, gonna oil up the chain. The chain was, oh, there goes the horn, hold on. Uh, get that in a minute. Oil up the chain, you flip her over, do her upside down, and that way you can get the wheel spinning, and you get the chain spinning, and then you can, uh, you know, just by holding the oil can in one position, you can oil the whole chain. 
of course, what was happening was the oil was catching on the wheel and getting thrown pretty well all over the place. Well, maybe not all over the place. Thank you very much, Bill. Well, he got that done, and then he flips her over, and uh, what he doesn't notice, of course, is the chain just falling right off the bicycle, which Whoa! that would slow you down a little. But uh, he's undone, and he gets, uh, gets the chain back on there and uh, gets her all back into shape and uh, puts the horn back on. I duct taped the bell on there, which, uh, you know, it holds it, but it makes it just a little bit, yeah, a little bit quieter than it would be ordinarily. And then he's, Bill has the two wrenches, luckily. <laughs> So now they're good enough. Now look at the streamers on there, and he's got the hard hat, and he's got everything. Then away he goes, and boy, he's really, he can really move on that thing. There's oil all over it. And he's, he's yeah. whipping. Way to go, Bill. And just whips right by me, and then the, the streamers got caught right up in the tire, and the saw and up and over he goes. Look up. Oh, 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 well. It is spring. My favorite time of year. Winter is ice and cold and shoveling snow and cars that won't start. Summer is baking heat, sunburned bugs and noisy tourists. Fall is cold and damp with leaves to rake and everything drying and freezing up. Spring only has bugs and rain. So it's my favorite time of year <clears throat> by default. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, the situation between uh, Murray and Noel has really deteriorated. Uh, Murray's prices are so darn high in, in the store that the lodge members have all decided to boycott it, which I would put in the Department of Redundancy Department. <laughs> the only guy shopping there, actually, is uh, Doc, because uh, Murray lowered the, the prices on uh, rubber worms and fluorescent frogs in return for Doc acting as Murray's lawyer, which puts them both into one of those lose-lose situations that Murray and Doc are kind of famous for. <laughs> It sure is funny how a shooting can spoil the mood of a place. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll get it all straightened out at tonight's lodge meeting. Oh, Uncle Red, that's the call of the meeting. We have to go now. Come on, hurry up, okay? Because you know how I like punctuality. Yeah, and I like punching you, Harold. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll just go down to the meeting and just hang with us for a minute here, and uh, we'll just uh, clear the air of any animosity, and then we can get right back to hunting. <laughs> Number two, the whole truth. <laughs> now, never mind. Oh, uh, Instead, I call the accused as my next witness, Mr. Noel Christmas. <laughs> now then, Mr. Christmas, if that is your real name, <laughs> did you or did you not shoot my client with malice aforethought and dire intent? Uh, it, it was an accident. Just answer the question, please. Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. Now, I call the victim to the stand. Mr. Murray Woolworth, owner of the famous store, Murray's. <laughs> In your own word, would you please describe for the court just exactly what happened? He shot my tush. Mm. And why did he do that? Oh, I don't know. I think he was jealous, because I'm taller than he is. You're not! Uh -huh. <laughs> well, now I shall have to call to the stand my expert medical witness, Doc Render. I object. You're not a real doctor. So? I'm not a real lawyer, either. <laughs> now, Doc Render, you have examined the posterior in question? 
I have. And uh, in your expert medical opinion, would you say that the wound was caused by deliberate misuse of a firearm? Well, uh, it's hard to say. I, uh, I think. You think? You think? No, no, no. I ask you to consider that a man's career is at stake here. Now, ask yourself, could it have been an accident? Well, it's, it's hardly feasible that... Yes or no? I, uh... Yes, it, uh, it could have been an accident. <laughs> Your Honor, I move then that the charges of attempted murder be reduced to one of accidental discharge of a weapon in a restricted area. I rest my case. <laughs> this case for me? Well, the law is a funny thing, Maria. That's why I became a doctor. <laughs> well, you can pay full price just like everyone else, Mr. Render. <laughs> oh, now, wait, now, wait. Now, maybe we can make this just a little bit fair. No, why don't you at least pay for Murray's damages? Hey, that should be enough for you, shouldn't it? No. no. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I think so. I'm going to make that motion. All in favor of that happening, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Nay. Uh, <laughs> nay. That's motion carry. Yep. Oh. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh. <laughs> All right then. Okay. I want a new pair of slacks. Fifty-one dollars. A brand new wallet. That was real naga hide. Forty-nine dollars. I want loss of income. Ninety dollars. A band aid. One dollar. And the new pair of underwear. Oh. No, the bullet went through an already existing hole. But I do want pain and suffering. A million dollars. Yeah, we'll make a list for you. Okay. Any other business on the thing there, Bill? Nothing going on? Okay, let's get Noel up here to entertain us. Hey. Uh, I think it's only appropriate at this time uh, uh, that as a head of uh, lodge security that we deal with uh, uh, safety with firearms. So I happen to have brought a, a rifle up here. This duty is loaded, so I want you all to realize that this is a dangerous thing. Well, I, I thought they could settle that with a few words, especially if one of the words is money. And uh, now Murray can go from being 600% overpriced to back to his usual 300%. And besides which, he's got a, something he can show his grandchildren, or, or at least describe. And anyway, uh, if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming uh, straight home after the meeting. So now would probably be a good time to pop my flannel at pajamas into the toaster oven. If I notice that yours are in there, too, I'll treat that as a sign. <laughs> so, until next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> When you pull it out, careful not to snap because in a fire. But there right now, okay, the gun is now cocked, okay? We are ready to kill at this point. So, I, so will you hold still out there when I'm trying to lecture? You're not going to get the fine points of this weapon if you're going to be jumping all over. Okay, now, it's cocked, it's ready to go. You aim. Now, this is important, right? Okay, you aim and get all right, so you're looking down the barrel at the sight, and you can pretty well see everybody. Things moving quickly, like Bob over there, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>